Hi, I'm Shari with Organizational Learning and Talent Development. Let's talk about happiness. Right now there's a lot going on in our world that makes happiness a little challenging, right? Or very challenging. So let's look at what the experts say about happiness. So according to research, 50%, 50% of our happiness comes from our genetic makeup. So from our mom and dad. So whether we are glass half empty or glass half full people, that's based on how we were born. And 50% is a lot, but it's definitely not the whole pie. 10% is our daily circumstances. So whether we're rich or poor, whether we are beautiful or plain, whether we are married or single or divorced, our kind of day in and day out of our circumstances is just 10%. And that usually surprises folks. Now, if something that happens in our circumstances rises to the level that it is traumatic or a crisis, like you're unable to put food on the table or pay for rent, that swamps all of this. While you're going through that, that's all you can think about. So even if that's happening, there is good news. And that is that the research shows that 40% of our happiness is based on what you do. There are intentional strategies that you can engage in that can increase your happiness and how you think. So being intentional about your thoughts. Again, while you're going through a crisis, that kind of takes over. The good news is that experts say down the road, when you're past the point of the actual crisis, you absolutely can survive, you can recover, you can even thrive. Okay, so let's talk about the 40%. Research has shown that there are 12 things that if we engage in some of those, they are significantly likely to increase our happiness. As I go through them, think about which ones sound fun or uplifting to you, because some of them are gonna fit your personality and some of them would be kind of a drag to engage in for you, in which case they're not gonna lift your happiness. So, these things, include expressing gratitude. What are some things that you're grateful for? Taking care of your body. So exercise, meditation, and by the way, my colleague Shannon has some great ideas on how to adapt these things while we're at home. So in another video, we'll go through those. Learning to forgive. Sometimes we hold on to a lot of anger and frustration that really isn't touching the other person, it's just hurting us. So even doing something like writing a letter of forgiveness that you might never share with the person can help you let go. Committing to your goals, having some structure around your plans for what you're going to do. Strategies for coping, developing different strategies for coping, especially if you are dealing with something really traumatic. Religion and spirituality, and that's one that actually helps a lot with coping for a lot of people. Savoring life's joys, so those little moments that make life worth it. Nurturing social relationships. This one is huge, and it's actually through several of these. So thinking of ways to keep those social relationships um, connected even while we're staying in. Increasing flow experiences. So that's when you're so involved in what you're doing that you lose track of time. Maybe you're gardening, maybe you're playing with your kids, maybe you're painting, okay? Avoid overthinking. So turning off the news and making sure that your brain isn't always thinking about all of the things that are hard. Acts of kindness, ways to be there for other people. And cultivating optimism. 
And so again, my colleague Shannon has some great ideas on how to adapt some of these for while we're inside. So we'll share those in another video. I hope some of this is helpful.